hooked up right there. There we go. There we go. Look at that walleye right there. Man, is that the way you want to do it open water season? What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video and it is uh, another beautiful summer day out here. It's late afternoon right now. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not super happy that this is when I'm starting the day, but uh, it is just how it is from when you got to edit super late and then get up super early and do some more editing. You don't always get out here super early in the day, but um, today's video, I actually did a video like a year ago that was called how to jig walleyes like a pro. And uh, today we're doing the other video, which is how to troll walleyes like a pro. And uh, we're gonna, you know, we do a ton of trolling videos on this channel. We do a ton of everything videos on this channel, I guess, as far as walleye fishing goes. But um, we don't want to overcomplicate things and seem like every video is just way over people's heads. So if you ever had a video, if you ever wanted a video on like exactly how we're trolling, exactly how to run your spread, um, how to pattern fish, the t terminal tackle you need, um, the rods, reels, everything like that you need, um, this is gonna be a great video. So if you never troll for walleyes in your life, you should be able to watch this video and get a pretty good grasp. Or if you just have a little bit of walleye trolling experience and uh, you kind of want to you know up your game a little bit this should be a phenomenal video so we're hoping to catch a few walleyes but we're really hoping to take a deep dive kind of into exactly um, you know situationally how you can catch more walleyes trolling and that's exactly what this video is about so um, without further ado we're getting the trolling motor down getting the Minn Kota going in this video I feel like this video could be an hour long of just me sitting in this chair right here talking about how to troll walleyes because there's just you know there's just so much to talk about i guess but uh maybe i'm just weird but uh yeah we're gonna get trolling we're gonna set some lines up hopefully catch a few walleyes and uh talk all about trolling 101. Wow, look at that, that fish came up, bit, touched it, missed him, and he came back and bit again. Wow, look at that right there. We're sitting in 48 feet right now, fishing about 25 down. And when you're out here, they're likely gonna be good ones. And this one, you can just already tell. I got about 120 feet of line out on a one ouncer here one ounce weight oh man I, there's just there's no fish that's more finickier or rewarding to catch in my opinion and these fish that just own, roam open water for much of their life and a lot of times they're the biggest fish in the lake and we got a good one on <laughs> and trolling's a lot of times the only way to get at them and the when is trolling the best open water on days that look like this high skies sunny and a little bit of wind in the mix. And a lot of times these are the worst days to fish structure. So I do an, a ton of trolling in the, in the summer months, um, as probably a lot of walleye anglers do. And a lot of times it's the most effective you know, tool in your box this time of year. Trolling is kind of situational a lot of other times of year in my opinion, but man, this time of year, fish out in deep water, kind of peak summer heat. Get the planer boards out, get your spinner rigs, get your cranks, get your trolling rods and start pulling the basin. Cause this is just absolutely the time to do it here. I'm gonna collapse my rod down so it's a little bit easier for me to net this guy when he pops up right next to the boat here. We are 50 feet straight down right now. The other best part about basin fishing, there's nobody out here doing it. It feels like you got the lake to yourself cause everybody else is like, you know, on their favorite little rock bar. And here we go, this is, you got all these other guys buzzing around going rock hump to rock hump where the fish are a lot of times very negative in the middle of the day and you get out here over the basin they are just some studs and a lot of times they're more active all right 35 back it's going pretty much pretty much straight down here which is always a good sign and get my net ready to go 
take your time absolutely crucial when you're trolling slow you guys are probably looking at this like wow tom this is the most boring video i've ever seen in my life but you just gotta trust me you gotta go slow on these guys keep that rod loaded let them fight themselves out and this fish is coming in 10 feet down now to my bouncer oh man i can just tell you from the angle of this line that it's gonna be a big fish all right here's my bouncer Oh, it's a stud. It is exactly what we're after. You guys probably got a really bad glare here. He's hooked right in the back hook. There we go. Man, trolling when you dial it in. There's really very few techniques that you can cover as much water with and be as effective. And in the middle of summer, just flat out catch big fish. And that is just exactly the one of the fish we're after right there. He's got like a deformed eye on one side. That's probably why he came back the second time. He's like, I'm not sure what that thing is. We'll go bite it again. And that one was just on a tiny little butterfly blade. And uh, he got it hooked pretty good though. We'll just grab our players real quick, pop them off. And we'll be back in business here. There we go. Look at that walleye right there. Man, is that the way you want to do it open water season? And uh, look at that. He's got kind of a deformed eye on one side. But obviously, he's having no problem eating as he's nice, thick, and beefy. And we're going to let this guy go right away. And uh, hopefully do it again. I mean, that is just, you know, exactly how you want open water trolling to go. Summertime trolling, one of my absolute favorite patterns every year. You know, if you could, oh my gosh, no way, right there. Oh, and just as I'm saying it, I just literally looked out at that board and it started going back. Man, oh man, oh man, right on cue. Just let that fish go. Now the pressure's on. Now the pressure's on. We got to get two in a row here. Man, just unbelievable, unbelievable. We got to do a little redirection here. And we're going to go all into some tips you can use with your Minkota and with your iPilot remote. They're going to make this whole process much easier for you. Because uh, when you're out by yourself or when you're out with buddies running a ton of rods, it's kind of a daunting task to get where you want to go, keep the speed you want to go, and uh, catch and land fish all at the same time. Very effective, you know, on a lot of you know a lot of Great Lakes fishermen, really big water fishermen, you know, do a lot of trolling. I do more trolling than anything in the middle of summer on a lot of these lakes that are 1,500 acres, 3,000 acres, 5,000 acres. These in lakes, you know, I think people have this misconception that the big planer board spreads are. You know kind of exclusively meant for the great lakes where you come out here and it's like a just an, the untapped mass of fish that does not get harassed for the summer time frame and a lot of these fish you know a lot like muskies or other <coughs> other kind of big fish they spend a lot of their life out over basin you know there's certain fish and a lot of times it's the adults that all end up out here <laughs> Oh, we lost him. Too much pressure. Well, there it is. We'll get it set back up, get another one, but it's cool to see anyways. And that was going to be another equally big fish. So whenever you're trolling, whether it's one rod, two rods, three rods, six rods, nine rods, kind of no matter how many, how many rods you're going to troll, your equipment is very important. What rods you're using, all those things matter. You know, whenever I'm trolling, I like the line counters, obviously, because that gives you the ability to duplicate things. And uh, without, you know, duplicating and repeating the process is kind of what catches you more fish when you're trolling. But, um, I'll, I'll kind of list the rods that I use and I love them. I've been using them the whole season now and a little bit last year even. And uh, you know, look for rods that, uh, you know, if you guys want to buy these rods, great. If you don't want to, look for rods with the same characteristics, you know, that are in a price point that, that you know, that you are comfortable with. And uh, the rods I'm fishing with are the 2B um, Fishing Genesis trolling rods. And they come in three lengths. And uh, one of them right here, this is the short one. I do not have this one out today. This is like an inside rod. Um, you could put a planer board on if you want, but most of the time this is gonna be like an inside rod. So if I had another person with me and we were gonna run six, the short five foot three rod would go right in this holder right here. And this is always gonna be your farthest back. It's always gonna be the closest bait to the boat is this little short rod. It's great on lead core, um, or like I said, a lot of times I'll use it on a bottom bouncer or a crankbait and just stick it right down right there. It keeps the spread really clean. Generally what you wanna do is work out your farthest out rod you want on your longest rod your farthest back and closest to the boat rod um, you want to be your shortest rod so that's kind of why where this 5.3 fits in for me most of the time there's not a planer board on it i run it as a down rod very close to the boat and it keeps my spread running nice and clean now the second rod out is normally and this is the number one rod i use it's an eight foot 
6 telescopic rod by two brothers and uh same company same brand and everything and it folds down like this for eight six and i can fit nine of these in my side rod box so i can put a whole bunch of these in there and uh, you know they probably fold down to about six feet they're pretty short when you fold them down which is awesome and these rods are probably the most common one if you're going to pick up some trolling rods or get into trolling this is kind of the size you want and every trolling rod is going to have kind of the same build at least a good trolling rod what you're going to have especially on a planer board rod is you need a little bit of meat to it because you need that thing to be able to hold that board rods that are too flimsy when you're trolling what will happen is they'll just be way bent over right when you put the board on and you start trolling because the boards obviously do have pull and uh, you know too spongy of a rod that thing's going to be doubled over it's going to be way too flimsy so you need a very soft tip on these rods right which these have a soft tip um, that kind of loads that thing up and the fish can load it up when you're fighting the fish it's got a softer slower kind of midsection but it's got plenty of weight to kind of hold this thing now trolling is a lot like fishing like jerk baits or anytime you're doing this kind of crank bait or spinner pattern where you have a lot of line out um, i generally like this to use mono on these rods to give it a little bit more stretch and the rod is softer too it's meant to absorb that most of the trolling rods are composite or glass and that's kind of what you look for it's a slower action and they're meant to load up a lot when you're fighting those fish and that's absolutely key so this 8.6 is generally my number one planer board rod um, you can also run it as a down rod it's kind of probably the most useful one that fits a, a ton of different applications now the other one which i fish a ton this is always my farthest outside rod and this is an 11 and a half foot two-piece rod so i can still fit it in my boat and everything like that and this is the long one that goes outside and the reason i like this on my farthest out planer board or my farthest out down rod is because it gets it very far away from the boat number one and my line angle is up above all my other middle board rod lines so it gets the line way up and the line does not get bogged down in the waves if you're going to run a board way outside like in bigger waves and if you try to run a planer board super far away in waves with a shorter rod what ends up happening is the waves actually come up over the line and it makes your spread kind of slide backwards and it's just not as clean so and that 11.6 is my farthest outside rod. Now we'll throw up a screen or another video right here. Now, a lot of times I'll do down rod trolling where I run in like six down rods. And basically I'll do the same thing. That 11 and a half foot's on the outside, eight and a half's in the middle, and that five foot is right down the back. And this keeps my spread super clean. So I don't even need planer boards in situations where I'm like trolling a weed line or something like that, where I'm trying to keep baits very specifically in a design situation. So, you know, Running your trolling spread has a lot to do with the rods. You always want to be, especially if you're running multiple rods, stacking lines like this, shortest, mid-length, and then longest rod right out on the tip. This is how I fish, you know, whenever I'm trolling, especially in Wisconsin where I get multiple lines, I'm almost always setting it up like this, and it keeps my spread clean, and ultimately I catch more fish. Hooked up right there. Well, I actually just missed one on a different board. Just didn't hook up. Man, dude, this thing is going ballistic here. What is this? That thing is really dogging. I got my GoPro cord unplugged. We just got kind of ultimate chaos right now. And I know my GoPro is going to die. It's enough to fight the fish. And then you got to fight the, the filming stuff on top of it. We'll just get this plugged in like that. I think we should be going now. I think we can officially reel this fish in. Oh, we might have the GoPro die while we're fighting this one. I was literally, uh... on the outside. And we must've gone through kind of a pack of them there. Cause like you saw, I had uh, first the inside board go off, which was a little bit closer and then uh, the outside board came by that same wolf pack and got launched back again. And this is definitely gonna be a nice fish. I mean, it just tanked that board. A lot of times you can kind of tell you got a nicer one when they just really dig back and then kind of keep going and pull a little drag right off the bat. This is on my long outside rod. It's just a nice, slow, steady process. Get the board unclipped if you're by yourself, just kind of start walking away from them. There we go. We got them on. Too awesome. I think there's a butterfly blade on this one. And uh, kind of your, your standard kind of 
double crawler rig. Oh my gosh, dude, is this thing running? What is this? All we've been catching out here all week's been walleye. So I'd be shocked if this was anything else, but man, is it, is it pulling? Man, dude, this is just, these trolling battles are just like so dicey because you know they can just be hooked however when you're running some of the smaller stuff. All right, there's my bouncer. Oh yeah, it's gotta just be a stud. I can see him down there. Oh dude, really nice fish here. Really super, super thick one. All right, all right. I know we got the long rod here, buddy. We're just gonna take our time with you. I'm gonna pop you up kind of over here. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we got him. There we go. Man, is that a stud? Is that a stud or what? Man, dude, that fish is heavy, heavy, heavy. And anytime you're fishing these in the lakes and you're constantly getting like 24 to 27s, you are 100% on the right fish. And this one has been eating good. And uh, you guys can probably see this rig here. Little tiny butterfly blade, slow death hook. And then I do got a trailer little octopus hook on this one for kind of running that running that whole crawler. Man, dude, is that, whoops, settle down, buddy. Is that a nice fish or what? The sun angle's all wrong, but I don't even care. I mean, that is a tall one right there. Just built, anytime you put your hand across and they're that wide, super, super nice, healthy fish. Let's let that guy go. Wow, is that a good one. There we go, another stud, just let him go. Super nice, clean fish. And man, that is just how effective trolling can be this time of year. All right, well, another big thing when you're thinking about trolling is trolling is ultimately about patterning. You know, patterning when you're jig fishing or slip bobbering, um, it takes a lot of the variety out. It'd kind of be like patterning your whole boat. You know, if you, let's imagine you had five guys in your boat and you guys were all jig fishing. One guy starts catching all the fish and uh, all five people have different baits on. Do all five people leave different baits on or do they switch to the thing that the fish are biting the most? Same principle applies when you're trolling. You know, I have three rods out. We're in Wisconsin today. We're trolling three lines and uh, I'm trying to pattern the fish. It's just like having three people in the boat. If I have one rod that keeps going off over and over, there's a couple different variables which we got to look at uh, when we're doing something like that. How much line are you letting out? What kind of depth are you trying to achieve? Whether you're fishing with a crankbait um, or a piece of lead and a bottom, or you know, like a bottom bouncer and a spinner rig or a snap weight, or really no matter what you're fishing, um, you got to think about how much line you have out. And when you're trolling, the amount of line from the tip of your rod to the planer board that doesn't has nothing to do with it. It's how much line you have out past the you know from the planer board to your hook that is the amount of depth you are achieving so that's number one how much line you have out how deep is that bait running you know if we have a, a spinner rig at 100 feet back and then 80 feet back and 70 feet back and the one at 100 keeps going off over and over well then it's a kind of a no-brainer to switch the other two to 100 feet or maybe go like you know 105 and 95 and get right in that zone where those fish are biting and the next thing is obviously lure. You know, if you're fishing crankbait and uh, you know you got a multitude of crankbaits on, and one crankbait keeps catching all the fish, switch to more things like that or more colors like that. Spinner rigs, same type of thing. And a lot of these lakes will get the fish will get very, very like touch and go on colors. A color or a certain blade type might make a huge difference. And uh, you know, today it's, it seems like it's mostly these butterfly blades for the most part, of these smiley blades. Something that you can move very, very slowly. And then I have a slow death hook on there, a couple of purple beads, and then a stinger hook on there. And that's kind of seeming like the best rig for today. Now, the other thing is speed, that which you can think about. Yes, your boat, you might set your cruise control and your trolling motor at 1.2 or 1.3. Now, especially when you're running boards like this and you have a wide spread, the little bit of turn like this will slow one side down and speed one side up. So if, you know, the three times, which I, let's say, say the last three bites I've had, I've been on a turn and my boat's been going like this. Well, my boards on the left side, when I'm making a left turn, are going to be, those baits are going to be slowing down and, uh, just moving at a lower speed and a lot of times you know that's how you can kind of dictate how fast those fish want it today very slow my first two bites i was turning at the side the fish bit on and uh, lo and behold the boards went back so i slowed my speed way down today and i'm going much slower because that's the other variable right you got kind of lure um, depth in the water and then speed those are kind of the three main variables that a lot of times will dictate your success now 
when you kind of match all three of those things, then you can imagine it's just not that you have one guy fishing the right thing, then you have three guys in the boat all fishing the right way, and it makes you a hundred times more efficient. So trolling is all about patterning. You know, we basically have, like I said, three lines going here um, and in a state where, which allows three lines, um, it, it makes that a lot more easy to kind of pattern these fish on exactly what they're biting and kind of make those small tweaks. So I get all three of my rods fishing versus, you know, basically just trolling around with one rod at a time um, where you'd have to kind of cycle through and, uh, you know, your other two lines would be worthless if, uh, you know, you just had the wrong thing on the whole day. So like I said, trolling is all about patterning, speed lure and depth and those are kind of the main things that are going to determine your success and then duplicating that on every single rod in the boat and that's kind of the secret to catching more fish trolling oh, big 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 <laughs> oh man did that one just tank it I actually just let a little one go. I don't even think we're gonna record or put that one in the video, but this one, if we land, it'll make the video. That board got throttled back. And I'm, it seems like they want it really slow today. So I just hammered on them right away and just cranked that reel real fast to kind of tighten them up and set that hook a little bit better. My gosh, dude. I caught that last one and the board was just like, eh, kind of sort of going back. And I was like, what is up with that? I figured it was a small, small mouth or something because it's so out of place for what we've been catching out here. This one's right though. This one's 100% the right variety. Base and trolling most of the time, you don't want to be right in those fish. You want to be up above them. I'm going way up on the seat for this one. Come here, buddy. I'm just gonna pop you off real quick. Nice and easy. Load that rod way up. Kind of walk forward when we take the board off. There we go. Now we are tight lined to the fish here. Out here all by myself today. Out in the middle of the lake, we're sitting in 54 feet of water. And uh, they are just snapping. Now, one question we get a lot on YouTube is like, you're in 54 water, aren't the fish dying when you bring them up? Well, they're not on the bottom for one. Most of these fish are about 25 down. And on top of that, this kind of fight, now if you had a fish that was like 30 feet down and you were jig fishing, you just cranked them up as fast as you could, that's a lot worse for these fish. Um, when they, especially the bigger ones, when they just fight themselves out like this and it's this slow, gradual process up, they are super healthy and, uh, no need to worry about those ones. All right, buddy. 18 feet back, we gotta get the net. He's really dogging right now. Come on. 12 feet, nice and easy. This is just gonna be, I just absolutely love this. When you're on these patterns that are just almost exclusively big fish like this, we're gonna see the bouncer here in a second. Yep, bouncer's right there. All right, I did grab that other line, which I'm not super thrilled about, but just kind of happens sometimes. It's not actually as big as I thought he was gonna be. He's a nice one though. Oh yeah, there we go. In the bag right there. Just gonna leave him in the water for a second. Unhook him. Come here, buddy. Believe it or not, it's actually the smallest one of the afternoon, but still a really nice fish. And there we go. I just kind of looped those lines to clear that one and uh, totally untangled now. All right, come here, buddy. Let's take a look at you. Not as big as I thought he was going to be, but he really put up a fight. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful basin walleyes on the troll. Such a, just an incredibly effective way to catch these fish this time of year and uh, all quality, and you can't complain about those guys. All right, well, another big thing, and probably one of the most important things that should be in every single video that goes unmentioned, 
is bolt control. You know, bolt control is ultimately what's going to catch you fish when you're trolling. And uh, really, you know, almost any time you're walleye fishing. And there's probably very few fish that are more bolt control oriented than walleyes. They're just so specific. And uh, yeah, a lot of times I always say, I think walleye fishing will make you a better fisherman for everything else. Be ultimately, because of bolt control, I'm paying attention to a lot of the little things. But, um, you know, it all depends. Like I said, you know, you are ultimately generally trying to maintain a speed and a direction that ultimately dictates what your baits are doing. So, it's, you know, bolt control is incredibly important when you're fishing this way if you're going way too fast with these you know spinner rigs and bottom bouncers they're going to come super high in the water column and they're not going to be around those fish too slow and they're going to be down below it similarly with crankbaits and you know, there's a lot of days we're going a certain speed with a crankbait is much more effective than going a different speed then you add wind on top of that and then it all becomes more complicated again so bull control is incredibly important now like i said they were pulling spinner rigs and spinner rigs are generally pulled at a slower speed than crankbaits we're going like a mile an hour today and um most of this is achievable with the bow mount, just with the Minn Kota. We get a ton of YouTube questions. Why don't you ever use your kicker? Well, we've been doing so much trolling with spinner rigs, and it's been so calm out, I feel like, a lot of days this summer. Um, there's been no need to, right? I can keep my Minn Kota on, like, speed three, and it's going to put me around all day long, you know, at this speed. Now, if I got into some big wind, and I was still trying to go at a really slow speed, I would use the kicker. Basically, what I would do is just trim it down, and kickers are obviously great because you can achieve a much slower speed with them than you could with your big motor trim that down fire it up i would just engage it enough to kind of get me going the speed i want then i'd use my trolling motor to dictate my direction in which i want to go now if you're pulling crankbaits generally you're going a lot faster and uh, because of that the kicker would almost always come into play in that scenario when you're trying to hit speeds of like you know two miles an hour two and a half miles an hour it's going to be tough to keep the trolling motor going all day long on like a 12 15 hour day at that speed without some thrust from behind right and that's kind of where the kicker ultimately comes into play now another great th thing uh with a lot of newer motors whether that's a suzuki or you know a lot of your four strokes especially in the lower rpms and my own suzuki 90 and uh, absolutely love these two motors they have rpm adjusters on them so if i'm trying to pull crankbaits and let's say i don't have a kicker a lot of times what i could do is just turn it on and and up you know go up or down with my rpm adjustments and that's going to go in small increments so you could really tweak that a lot you know if you're going to go fast just leave it in gear and uh, go up a few rpm notches if you want to go down a little bit you know go down a little bit and hit the down button right here and you guys can probably so i'll kind of go up for a second and you'll hear it engage i don't know if you can do it in neutral though now we got to put it in gear so that's the sound it'll make it'll beep at you when you go up or down there's up another increment of rpms and it just very slowly so you can really kind of tweak that in a lot like that if you don't have a kicker now with the kicker it's simple just a simple matter of you know slowly engaging that throttle and you're going to have a lot more kind of um, variation in that speed with the kicker so bull control hugely important now a lot of times when i'm trolling you know anything where i have the trolling motor down which is most things i'm going to troll there's two features with the mccotas with your ipilot remote you can use one you get there's a setting where you can follow a track which i'm not going to go too much into that today we'll go into that on another day very handy feature um but uh, the big one here is one is called autopilot and the symbol is going to look i don't even know if we can get it on here i'll try to find one it's an n with an arrow and that is called autopilot and what that's going to do i'll turn that on and uh you know the touch screen ones you just touch it or you can just hit it on the ones that are still a button and that's gonna keep your heading. So that's gonna keep you dialed on a heading. So something like this where I'm open water trolling and I'm just going you know, generally in a very straight line one direction or another. Basically all I gotta do is hit that and then I'm, you know, I'm going that direction, right? I can mess around with my rods or do whatever. Now the other big thing is speed and there's a setting on here called cruise control. I can set that. So a lot of times, let's say I want to hold at like 1.4. I'll dial that to 1.4 miles an hour. Now I have my direction and my speed accounted for. I can sit over here and mess with rods and catch a fish and go over here and set a planer board out. And I still know I'm on the right track and I still know I'm going the same speed. If every time you catch a fish, like let's say you're trolling through a, like open water like this, where you might go 100 yards and there's nothing. And then you get in this big wolf pack of fish, which happens a lot. You know, if every time you go to land a fish, you're taking your off the trolling motor, you're off your core, so you're not where you want to be anymore that's you know takes away your opportunity to double up or catch multiple fish and at the end of the day that's a lot of fish that you catch right when you get in those wolf packs so bull control is huge when you're trolling it's really huge in a lot of ways when you're walleye fishing um, it's one of the many reasons i love having a tiller but uh, you know pay super close attention to those things that, you know next time you're out trolling you guys are going to catch a lot more fish
All right, well, that is gonna do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this one. I'm gonna take the cameras down, which is always a good feeling, and troll probably into the late evening hours and just have a little fun trying to mix things up. But I appreciate you guys watching this video. I know there's just a million things we didn't go on to into, like lead core, snap, and just a whole, just a million different things. When you troll spinners, when you troll cranks. This video was meant to be more basic than that. It was meant to be how you troll and, uh, you know, a lot of the, the hardcore things that matter, kind of no matter what you're trolling. And so hopefully that, that point kind of came across. And hopefully a lot of you guys who, you know, had a lot of questions on this have a much better grasp on what we're doing. Trolling's an unbelievably effective way to catch walleyes, really no matter where you are. And and uh, you know, the summer is obviously a great time to troll. There's great spring trolling opportunities, there's great fall trolling opportunities. It's all kind of specific to where you go. And maybe we'll do a video on when is the right time to troll in the future. But like I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this, caught a few fish, um, talked a whole bunch about trolling application stuff. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys are not yet, please subscribe to this channel. Stay tuned for more content. And we'll see you guys next time.